Belarusian Alumina Association of Belarusian Institution Nigeria holds its inaugural event in Abuja. Elect officers to run the affairs of the association for good. We have a report. The Nigerian Housing Challenge built environment professionals, including Bodi Adidiji, Kola Akomolede, Austin Otegbolu, speak on the way forward. We also have a report. Crystal Court Lekki Lagos in focus as the managing director, chief executive, architect Imaobi speaks on the uniqueness of the hotel and its offerings. Plus, Mojek International Limited set to break the cycle of uh, lack of supply in the electricity metering system in Nigeria with a strong strategy. This is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Hello and thanks for joining us. My name is Kenneth Odushola Stevenson and this is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Thanks for joining us. On today's edition of the program, like you may have heard on the highlight, we're going to be talking about a very important institution that was just put together recently at Abuja. It is Belaruniski Alumina Association of Belarusian Institution in Nigeria. This particular organization is a an alumni student from Belarus institution that are already in Nigeria and working and doing very well. One of the major participants also who emerged as one of the officers will be speaking with Inside Business after all about that association. We'll talk about all that when we come back right after this commercial break. <music> He's still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Thanks for staying with us. Indeed, Belarusianski As Alumina Association of Belarusian Institution in Nigeria was instituted in January this year. And indeed, the, the inaugural event that saw the emergence of the officers that will run the affairs of the association for the next two years also took place also at Abuja. And inside business was at an event where a very important personality indeed, a friend of the family, engineer Aneti Umana emerged as the executive secretary of the association. Here's the report. As part of plans to celebrate distinguished Nigerians who graduated from various higher institutions in Belarus Republic, the Alumni Association of Belarusian Institution of Nigeria had its inaugural meeting recently at Abuja with an agenda which included the election of officers to pilot the affairs of the association. The event which included tour of Abuja, general meeting, inauguration of alumni body, Board of Trustees and Patrons of the Association also incorporated the Gala Night. As early as 8 a.m. in the morning, guests as well as distinguished personalities from Mirad Vacation who were trained in Belarus and resident in Nigeria and in diaspora started arriving at Valencia Hotel Abuja, the venue of the meeting. general meeting which also served as the election of officers provided the opportunities for members to indicate their willingness to serve and provide the necessary leadership for the young association. Archibong Asuko, 22 votes. Archibong. By virtue of these results, Archibong Asuko is hereby our public official officer and welfare elect. Congratulations. Engineer Umana has 17 votes. And Dr. Uh, Usman, 13 votes. So, the reason of this result, Umana is our general secretary. With the election over, the following executive members emerged. The position of the president went to engineer Mukta Usma, while that of the vice president went to engineer Thomas Modi. 
Engineer Anieti Umana emerged as the General Secretary of the Association, while Wali Shiroma Arugunda they came away with the position of Assistant General Secretary. Professor Dunk Ilia was elected as the Financial Secretary, while the position of the Treasurer went to Dr. Mrs. Maureen Chukura. Nasidi Sambo Bakinzuwe was elected as the auditor, while Mr. Achibong Asukwa emerged the public relations and welfare officer of the Young Association. The newly elected president, Engineer Usman, and the general secretary, Engineer Anietu Umana, speak on the historic events. The ESCO member has already been um, selected and uh, ex elected. So what we're going to do now is to sit down and work in line with the aims and objectives for which the association was set up. That is to promote unity amongst us and to also promote economic, socio-economic and cultural ties between Nigeria and the Republic of Belarus and also to, to, to come up with some projects by way of, you know, in, in, in Nigeria by way of giving back to the society because Nigeria has been so good to us by sponsoring us to go and study there and become who we are now. So these are some of the things that we intend to do. Start now. There are a lot of benefits. Uh, for one, we will create a good platform for networking amongst ourselves. You now we have uh, people from various uh, disciplines and backgrounds, doctors, people in, in the humanities, engineers and what have you. It will create foster a relationship amongst us. The elections and board meeting done, members disperse only to return in the evening for the gala night, which serve as the climax of the all day long event of the Alumina Association of Belarusian Institution of Nigeria. The gala night had in attendance distinguished personality for myriad of vocation who were trained in Belarus and resident in Nigeria and in the diaspora, including the officials of the Belarus Embassy in Nigeria. Our colleagues, Engineer Mode and uh, Dr. Johnson Awoyemi, brought up the idea, and with the help of uh, Professor Hanif, a WhatsApp group was, was started. And in it, we were discussing it on the possibility of forming this association. <clears throat> and today, here we are, people from all walks of life, from the US, from the UK, we are all gathered here today to celebrate our coming together. And um, on behalf of the executive committee and members, I wish to welcome you all to this gala night. Me and my colleagues, we are very proud to represent Republic of Belarus in Nigeria. Republic of Belarus is the former uh, Republic of uh, Soviet Union, is very known for, for its education. To our, according to our statistics, approximately 500 from 500 to 700 students from Nigeria are being educated in Minsk, in Belarus. We, we are strongly convinced that this education, what is gained in Belarus, will help you, will help your youth to get a proper job in Nigeria, and not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. With the principal aim and objective of organizing graduates of Belarusian Institution of Higher Learning for membership into an association and to advance the professional education and training of members among others, the Alumina Association of Belarusian Institution of Nigeria is set to break new grounds and make meaningful contribution to the growth and development of members and the education sector while contributing to stronger and rewarding bilateral relationship between Nigeria and Belarus. Well, congratulations to the executives of the Belarus Belaruniski Alumina Association of a Belarusian Institution in Nigeria. We'll be keeping tab on the performance of the association as the time goes on. But now, when we come back, right after the commercial break, we'll be talking about the Nigerian housing challenge. What are the professionals saying and what are the solutions to these challenges? We'll talk about it when we come back.
Welcome back. He's still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Shibode Adidiji is a former president of the Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Values. Also, Chief Kola Akomolidi is also a very renowned estate surveyors and valuers practicing in Nigeria. And also, Austin Otegolu, these are professionals in the built environment that has made their marks. Today, as Nigeria faces the most challenging times in terms of housing shortages and challenges, these professionals are talking about the way forward and how to get it done. Take a listen. Societies. Housing has been known to be a major component of creating stable and healthy communities and economy and it's often the largest single category of household expense. For housing to be successful, a country needs to have a stable microeconomic environment. Moderate to high inflation rate and minimal interest rate as witnessed in Nigeria are typical features of volatile and challenging economies. Nigeria's housing problems is derived from a historical lack of focus on housing development, according to experts. The problems confronting the housing sector in this country is much more than finance. If you pull all the resources in the world today into the housing in Nigeria, you will still not have the result that is commensurate with the amount of money being pumped into that sector, then you begin to ask yourself, is that all there is to say about housing? But let us be very frank and blunt and, 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 and straightforward about this matter. Problems militating against all housing policies and program in Nigeria can be summarized as follow. Based on my own perception, experience, training, and conviction. One is the lack of robust political will from one leader to another in Nigeria. Yes, the real estate profession has been an interesting one. Unfortunately, in Nigeria is a no-commerce feed. See charlatans, you see the well educated, you see the uninformed, you see the informed. But the public does not know the difference. Everybody can say about to let for sale. If you lose your job today, the next thing you do is become an estate agent. Uh, those who drop out of school, the next thing they do is become an estate agent. Even security guards on properties we manage, they are estate agents. But before you know it, they will, they will be looking for tenants and they will go and tell the landlord, I've got a tenant for you and they want their agency fee. Well, there's a, there's a link or relationship between the economic, the, the business, uh, the economic uh, climate and the real estate business. We call it economic cycle and real estate cycle. They relate together. When the economic cycle, is at its peak. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth's uh, uh, cycle flows suit is because at its flow suit. Okay. And when the economy those dives, it affects the real estate. Okay. So uh, real estate operates in a harmonic motion pattern. It goes up and down. Okay. So if the economy is is down, it's only for a while because investors in real estate are investors in the normal economic uh, situation. If people who are employed are not paid. If business is not going well, uh, it will affect real estate. It will affect all aspects of the economy. The solution to this then becomes government's strong institutional intervention in terms of favorable policy drafting and implementation. The coming on board of the Nigerian Mortgage Refinancing Company is a commendable step towards crashing the surface of this challenge. In all countries of the world, former sector financial intermediation can only exist with support of some government intervention. Government may intervene through enhancing the legal system of enforcing private businesses or may even operate or be a significant player in the primary housing finance system. I don't think that any Nigerian needs any education concerning mortgage. Simply defined is that you have a property to buy, you are able to pay 
a deposit, probably 5%, 10%, 20%, depending on the environment and other factors being considered. And then you link the payment, repayment of that loan with your salary or your income, whereby you pay a proportion of the capital over a period of about 20 years, 30 years, plus the interest. So that if a property is worth 10 million and you are given 20 years to amortize it, then what you are doing from year to year is less than 200,000 Naira. I will not agree with you that there's inefficiency in the Federal Mortgage Bank. No, that's Federal Re 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 Mortgage fin uh, uh, Refinance Body, not, not the FMBN. You see, the, the, this issue... Yes, this issue was discovered when the uh, uh, federal uh, uh, fund was set up, National Housing Fund. It was an idea of garnering money from people who are earning, I think, 5% of your salary to be paid there automatically. Corporate bodies are supposed to pay something. Government at every level are supposed to pay something. But government cannot implement it because government itself did not pay its own. So when you don't pay your own, you can't compare people to pay. So the problem of the of housing finance is the fund. I wrote an article sometimes ago. I said, look, if you have a government that's interested in housing, and say, okay, that's from this year, let's be voting 100 million, uh, 100 um, billion for housing. This is go hand in hand. So if it's very is key to whatever, so if government should give it a prim, pr primary attention, okay. and uh, it can be self financed. It can be financed itself. But if you don't have water in your house, okay. you buy water yes. every day. I've done a study, I found that, that on average, home, every average person in Lagos here spends about 3,000 to 2,000 naira on water every week. How much do you pay for water bill? 500, 600 naira a month for a flat, and then um, 500 naira a month for a flat, then 600 for, the, for that house. Yes. Kind of, and then you spend almost two thousand almost for a week for water buying water today countries enjoying a very high level of housing finance system are the ones that have created sound economic and enabling environment for the private sector except thailand whose government housing bank is a major and world-class model of direct government involvement in lending to individuals through the primary lending model what has happened in many emerging economies all over the world is that the government of the day has hired housing experts and policy analysts strictly on professional abilities, devoid of political gimmicks to devise ways to overcome housing challenges in their countries, knowing how significant housing is to a nation's GDP. Recent examples include India, Mexico, Jamaica, Malaysia, Brazil and Thailand. These countries have developed and deployed strategies and models ranging from housing loan guarantee, mortgage insurance, liquidity facilities, pass-through mortgage-backed securities and tax credit for low-income housing, seed capitals, hedging of foreign long-term debt for private market operators, among others. In Nigeria today, what we need in policy making are housing specialists who have the requisite knowledge and its competence and not just political figures who do not understand by any means the role of housing in any economy. With a population of over 170 million people, a good, sound and smart team of policymakers with leadership not based on geopolitical zones will boost the housing and housing finance markets. Uh, I think many of the things that the present government ought to be doing, they are already doing them. And my appeal to Nigerians, generally speaking, is that the kind of problems that they are tackling, they are not the kind that you can have the result achieved overnight. And what is then lacking, as far as that is concerned, the current government is that there is probably a kind of mismatch between the efforts they are making, their targets on one hand, 
and the organ that is communicating the challenges, the achievement, and how far they have moved to the generality of Nigeria on the other hand. You know, whenever there is economic problem, it is the real estate that suffers most. The effect on the real estate may take some time before it manifests, then it takes a longer time to disappear compared with other sectors of the economy. You see, because in real estate you need a lot, a lot of capital to invest in real estate development. And it takes time for it to mature. It takes you a year or more to build a house. For example, if it's a multi-story building, it could take you as, as long as five years to complete. So the effect is long on, 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 on the economy. Take, for example, Nigeria, what's happening today, scarcity of, uh, of dollar and the exchange rate is affecting the property development in the first instance. Infrastructure is, is, is very key to economic development of any nation. Without adequate infrastructure, nothing can move. Like now, there's no light here. You, you, you were in the lag last time to interview me. You couldn't do that because there was no light. So, and you left. The same thing, like you know, if you are doing business, you are in the industry, you're operating a factory, there's no light, and usually it's become very expensive. You may not want to, you may have to compare the cost of buying diesel to run your factory mm -hmm. and, the, and the product of the cost of the price you sell your products. Mm -hmm. So, if that is key, and then if there's no road, if the road network is bad. The forward and backward linkages of a viable housing industry are obvious. But what must be mentioned is that what's it, with such a population and still growing, Nigeria faces significant challenges in both its present and future housing stocks requirements. And speaking frankly, Nigeria's housing problem is derived from a historical lack of focus on housing development. Over the years, the country has not been able to develop a viable and sustained housing finance system, either because of lack of expertise or up-to-date and knowledgeable industry leaders, especially in the policy-making arms, lack of funding for relevant interventional or international agencies, department, political and selfish gains. Twice in the housing development history of Nigeria has the Ministry of Housing been created and scrapped. Government has oscillated between direct construction of houses and direct lending to individuals. But in all these, the professionals, especially built environment professionals, have suggested a viable solution which includes affordable housing and also the need to create the necessary window for private sector to take part in the housing development in the country. The foundation of the PENCOM, of the Pension Fund Administration Nigeria, is just tailored along the mature economy. But the truth of the matter is this, even when you have made that mistake and you find some minority opinions that focus on reality, but because of the vested interests of those that administer all our pool of funds all over the country, you would never see them make any change that can reflect the necessity confronting us as a nation. What am I saying about that? On Inside Business, the last time you watched this important documentary on Crystal Court, where the Chief Executive Officer, Architect Imaobi, who has done well as a built environment professional and also has done well in the design and build category of the construction industry. Today, he is an entrepreneur and a hotelier, you may want to call him, and he has put together one of the unique hotels in Lagos, Crystal Court, located at Lekki, Lagos. Take a listen to what this hotel has to offer and the uniqueness of the important brand. Crystal Court Lekki Lagos, medium-sized hotel with five-star service. Architect Obi speaks further on the offerings and the service provided. Yeah, the Crystal, Crystal Court, like I said, is, uh, you know, the, the different kinds of hotels. They have the, the large hotel, have what they call the boutique hotels. Uh, Crystal Court Call is what they call a boutique hotel. We have a twin boutique hotel. A boutique hotel is actually what you call a cottage hotel in, in overseas. Small, nice, homely. And that's what we've tried to do here. I'll give you an example. I don't have a, a club. I don't have an external restaurant. I don't have people hanging around at night, noise. This is strictly a home. The restaurant downstairs only services 
my guests. The lounge downstairs only services my guests. Well, uh, architect Imaobi, we wish you very well and a successful and uh, eventful uh, period in the hospitality industry in Nigeria. You did it well in the in the built environment, and you are still also a member of the built environment, doing very well. We also believe that you will take that particular exp expertise into the hospitality industry in Nigeria. It was said right there in that interview. Congratulations to you indeed. When we come back right after this commercial break, we will talk about the metering system in Nigeria. And the solution providers, Mujek International's offerings. Welcome back. He's still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Mojek International is one of the providers of metering system to the electricity industry in Nigeria. Recently, the particular organization offered to at least provide over 100,000 meters to the Eco Disco. And indeed, Inside Business has been monitoring this particular initiative and has been talking with the managing director, chief executive of the, of the organization, Mrs. Aldu. Mojek, uh, Mojek set up a, a, a metering facility, I mean, a, a meter production facility in the country. Um, at the moment, we um, have an installed capacity of about between uh, half a million to a million meters installed capacity of, of, uh, that, we, that we can produce, if at, at full capacity, right? Um, we're probably operating at less than half of that, you know, um, capacity at the moment. But again, that is due to orders, right? And that is due to quantity and all of that coming in from the distribution companies. Um, but aside from the, um, aside from our um, factory um, and what we do in meters, we also, um, thankfully today, Mojek is, uh, we have a footprint of about 70% uh, in the marketplace. All right, in the Nigerian market, we have a footprint of about 70%. So about seven out of 11 distribution companies, in some extent, right, to some extent, use our meters right, in the market today. And we thank God for that because that wasn't easy. Um, it wasn't just because the opportunity was there. Um, it was because we were dogged, determined, right, and would not take no for an answer to make sure that we get business um, with, with those that we, um, with, 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 with uh, um, uh, the distribution companies in the country. Um, so we're setting up this meter inst installation um, uh, program as well. And we're looking to work with the state governments, right, in the various states. Um, so I really would love to hear from um, their, from the governments particularly, and we're also going to be reaching out to them to try to help create jobs for their people because we're literally, uh, and we thank God for that opportunity, we're, we're able to go from state to state, so whether it's Ibadan, Enugu, you know, Abuja, or what have you, um, we're getting the contracts from there, and you know, so if we have a contract of a hundred thousand or fifty thousand or whatever it is, um, we're going to need to install fifty thousand meters. Well, you can imagine what that means, and I, that means I need many hands on board, right, to be able to get it done, to be able to meet our clients' um, expectations. HMO is um, the fastest growing HMO um, in Nigeria at the moment. Um, our mandate is to be um, that HMO that stands out in terms of infrastructure, human capital, technology. Well, I'm afraid that's about all we have time for on Inside Business Africa for today. We brought you some incisive report, especially on the Nigeria's housing challenge, where the professionals are talking about some solutions and some strategies. And also, we also brought you this important report about the Belaruniski Alumina Association. And indeed, Crystal Court. It's been Kenneth Odushola Stevenson presenting Inside Business Africa. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.